College Football 25 has a bunch of new coaching adjustments on both offense and defense. So if you guys want to know what these do and what are the best ones to use in College 25 football gameplay, stick around after the intro. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot, sniffing out the College Football 25 cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to go over the brand new coverage adjustments that are in the game. But before I do, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, as I plan on doing videos like this throughout the year as the game changes, as it gets updated, I like to do updates to this specific video because things definitely change throughout the year. Make sure to be a subscriber, like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go right into the video. Now, I'm going to start off on offense because this here is probably uh, the least valuable they have one new one here in tempo adjust which used to be available just by hitting the pushing the right stick in twice that's not there anymore now it's in the coaching adjustments um, which is something that once again is really just situational uh, value uh, me personally i'm going to stay in normal most of the game uh, there really are some benefits to be had in no huddle and turbo but no huddle is something that i pretty much will only use um, if I'm in a situation where I come out of the huddle and I see that I have an advantage somehow. Say I have three receivers on the field and my opponent is in a 3-4 defense. Or say I'm in an empty backfield and they're in a 3-4 defense. Then I'm going to go no huddle, which I can do at any point in time throughout the game. I don't have to do it in the coaching adjustment system. I can just hit wire triangle to basically keep my opponent in the no huddle. So if I come out a two tight end set or I come out under center, uh, you know, two, three tight ends and a fullback or something like that, and my opponent is in a dollar defense or a dime defense or something, once again, I'm going to use no huddle. I don't have to set that in the tempo adjust section to get the benefit of that. Uh, but that's basically the only time that I'll use that. All these offensive ones, in my opinion, are something that you have control over in the moment that you don't necessarily have to set up in the coaching adjustments. Now, they have a new one called Turbo, which is similar to no huddle, but it's just even it's even faster. And there is a benefit to running turbo that they did mention that if you're running turbo, uh, your your opponent's defense will will tire out quicker. Uh, their defensive line and stuff like that, or their 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 coverage guys won't get into a good position, meaning that they'll be worse in coverage. They may be getting off the ball slower because they might not get into their defensive stance. They might be able to, you know, the, the defensive lineman might not even be able to get down to a three point stance or something like that, so they won't get off the edges quickly and stuff like that. So there are benefits where turbo can like quell the pass rush and stuff like that. But there's also a lot of negatives things like uh, increased composure losses which is obviously important in the game uh, you're going to fatigue the fastest out of anything and you have the least playbook access but this is purely situational two clocks also situational if you're up late in the game and you want to two clock obviously this is the one that i probably use the most you can wear down uh you know get your get the play clock down to 10 seconds before you get to the line of scrimmage that's probably the most useful but these are all situational if you're down a score late or you're down two touchdowns uh you know in the fourth quarter or something like that then no huddle then uh, turbo make the most sense is actually switch that. Then those make the most sense. But this is all pretty much situational. I would say you pretty much always want to be in normal tempo adjustment for the majority of the game. After that, we have more uh, options here that are, once again, things you can control during the play. So I don't really mess around with changing these. Deep pass catching uh, for conservative is a rack catch. For aggressive is an aggressive catch. Same thing with the intermediate um, you know, pass catching, although it's backwards, aggressive is a rat catch, conservative is a possession catch. You can do all this stuff by hitting the, uh, the Y, uh, the X, or the A button during the play. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to, to try to pre-select that. Blocking, this is one that shouldn't be on here. Uh, you have two choices, conservative, which means you'll hold the blocks less, which what's the, pen, what's the point of that? And then you'll have aggressive, which will hold the block longer, which essentially turns into a lot of uh, holding calls. So there's really no value to this. It should take this out of the game. It's just totally stupid. Nobody touches that. And last but not least, we got ball carry, which is probably the uh, the most valuable one on here. And it's been on the game for a while. At least it's been in Madden for a while. Uh, balanced is still probably the best way to go. But I noticed that there's a lot of fumbles in this game, especially uh, non-running back ball carriers. Uh, still fumble a lot, but even regular running backs fumble a lot more in this game uh, based off the fact that I've just noticed that uh, ball carrier ratings are just a lot lower in this game, especially if you're you know past your starting running back on your second or third running back for whatever reason, say that uh, there's injuries or fatigue or whatever. Um, they, a lot of times they have like ball carry ratings like in the 70s and stuff like that. I've just noticed way more fumbles in this game. It just feels that way. So this is what a scenario where conservative is definitely a good option, especially if you're running like trick play offenses where you're, um, you know, 
running with the quarterback on a read option or you you know you're running with the quarterback in any scenario it's typically a good idea to have conservative if you want to make sure that they don't fumble now i wanted to test this theory when it came to ball care to see how much of a difference it would be between balanced conservative and aggressive so i'm going to choose each three and i'm going to run the ball 10 times so i could track the stats and see which one has the most yards the highest average and which one has the most fumbles so we're going to start off with balanced uh, on offense we're just going to pick we're not going to give ourselves anything good here we're just going to pick uh, a goal line uh, run we're going to go ahead and go with the power o and then on defense we're going to go with the best defense we can in the three four odd and we're going to pick the cup four quarters which is the best run defense actually we'll go cup four drop every single time we're also going to run the ball from the one yard line because we want to give ourselves as much room as possible if i break a big run i want to have the ability to score a 99 yard touchdown run it is what it is we're also not going to make any adjustments we're just going to run the play as designed and you can see on the first two plays i'm having a hard time getting to that edge as we're not really getting anywhere although on the next play a little bit easier as we finally get a five plus yard run I want to try to uh, to try to run towards contact a little bit more as well. So we're not running out of bounds as we want to see, you know, if we can get any fumbles out of this. So on the first, uh, on balanced, we ran the ball 10 times. We got 75 yards, averaging 7.5 per carry. We also broke three tackles, uh, which is going to be a good indicator as well. We got 11 yards after contact. All right, now we reset the practice so we can reset the stats. We're going to go conservative. Now this one here disables pretty much all ball carrier moves. So I should have the lowest in just about everything as I shouldn't be able to break tackles. I didn't get any fumbles on the last series. Um, so that's something where I can't necessarily do better than I did on balance. So I'm not really sure what the benefit is going to be here. As you can see, I really just have the ability to move with the left stick. So I'm not gonna be too surprised at the outcome of this as far as not getting a ton of yards i'm sure my average is going to go down so now with the final total after 10 carries very surprisingly uh we actually had a higher average with conservative on uh, which speaks very well for the prospect of using conservative a lot as we averaged 9.2 yards per carry without any ball carry moves we broke less tackles we only broke one tackle and then last but not least we have aggressive this one's going to be the most interesting as this says it, it triggers auto break tackles but increases fumbles we haven't had one fumble yet so the results of this were very shocking to say the least i didn't see any real benefit from uh from aggressive as i had the least amount of yards per attempt the same amount of broken tackles and i think the same amount of yak maybe one more yard of yak overbalanced um but the most surprising part is that i ran on conservative and i had the the best average out of all of them uh, when it comes to auto flip defensive play call i would say you want this off the majority of the blitzes that i've been uh, creating in my in my custom or my ebook that i'm going to be putting out pretty soon it might even be out today uh really involved a lot of blitzes where i'm flipping the defensive formation especially if you're trying to send a blitz a lot of times the best way to send blitzes is opposite the running back and i'll show you guys what i'm talking about uh we'll just go ahead i'm, I'm not sure what uh what defensive play I have uh, ready to go here. But let's just say it's a cornerback blitz. It doesn't really matter. Let's say we're doing the edge blitz, blitz three here, okay? So if we pick that and then we, we go on offense, we'll just pick something with a, a you know play action running back or something. It doesn't really matter. Um, but if you're going to be running a blitz like this, or if you're just running against a shotgun offense in general, um, you're going to want to do something like this where you have the cornerback uh, dropping back over the... Um, we have the cornerback on the opposite side of the running back because if he hands it off, it's going to be better in run defense, but it's also going to be better as far as uh, the blitz goes because the running back a lot of times can't rotate over to pick up the blitz. As you can see right here, he's in a play action in that direction and the guy just gets through a lot quicker. So in my opinion, the majority of the blitzes that I created in my upcoming ebook involve flipping the play. So this is going to be one of those years. And it's not always like that. A lot of years in, in Madden uh, previous years, flipping the play wasn't really important. And I would just leave it on. But in this particular game, in the current game, it feels like if you want to get pressure, you're going to, be want, to, you're going to want to flip the play nine times out of ten. So I would say have that off. Uh, another one that is new is defensive motion, auto, or defensive motion response, which this one here feels like a do-nothing um as i have a disabled but it feels like it, it doesn't do anything which we've seen coaching adjustments in the past from time to time where there's you know functions like this that don't actually really do anything and this is the new one for me uh in the past it was uh play ball 
versus play receiver versus swat the ball. You can set it to play ball every single time and your cornerback still swatting the ball whenever he feels like it. This feels like the exact same way. I get the idea behind her, at least what I think the idea is behind this, uh, which is basically if I set up a blitz, say I blitz all my linebackers or something like that, I don't want uh, a motion to move the linebackers out. So, but, but even if I disable this, you'll see that it doesn't change that. So let's go ahead and let's, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's just choose a, a 3-4 defense here. We'll go cover through Sky. On offense, we're going to go with, um, actually, I think the, the previous setup that I had was the best, the, the motion fake screen wheel here. So let's say that I want to blitz all linebackers to get a little pressure, right? The idea of this setting is that when this tight end motions, it won't mess up my blitz. It won't move everybody. But it does it anyway. As you can see, the blitzing linebacker moves. So that, to me, like I said, it's a do nothing. Um, it's a do nothing, uh, you know, function in the coaching adjustments. So since that's not really working right now, since disabling that, I mean, if it do, if there's something else to it, let me know in the comment section. Uh, maybe there's something I'm missing, but this is what I think it's supposed to do. But since that's not really working right now, since it's just ignoring that anyway, the best way to do that is just automatically move this linebacker because once you move a player on defense it's going to, they're not going to move from anything. So since I move that linebacker manually now, he's stuck where he is, and I got my blitz set up exactly how I want it. And you can see we're getting the same amount of pressure. Like I said, I even said that in the offensive side where, where you have the ability to change your blocking, it doesn't do anything positive, and it's still in the game. So this one here, I don't think this actually does anything. Uh, but let me know in the comment section if you, if you know what it is and, I, and I'm just missing it. After that, we have a couple of functions that have been around for a while, like cornerback matchups. I would say balanced <clears throat> makes the most sense if you're running zone. But if you're running man, uh, you really want to go by overall or by, by speed, uh, sometimes by height if you're going against like a six-foot uh, five receiver. Uh, this hasn't really changed. This is pretty much the same as it's always been. Now, two of the most important new ones that they added are the option defense read and pitch key, although I find that these are worded a little bit confusing and almost backwards. As the option defense read key is essentially just the, the read option defense, just like in years past in Madden, where all you really have to do is focus on the quarterback, and it's going to shut down a lot of option plays. So you're always going to want to set that to conservative. We'll go ahead and we'll pick a play just to show you guys what that looks like. As essentially, it's going to be the same thing it was in Madden, where the read option uh, defender, the uh, this particular defensive end right here, is going to be the read defender. If you set it like this, he's going to focus on stopping and waiting and making sure that the quarterback doesn't get outside, which is something that you're always going to want because part of playing defense is trying to turn the um, the, uh, the the play back up the middle where all the defenders are. The edge is always the most vulnerable. So if you want to stop the inside run, just pinch the defensive line. That's really simple. And you can see the, the edge defender is going to hold or make the quarterback hand off every single time because if he wants to get outside there, that defensive end is going to be waiting for him. He's not going to get anywhere. So just pinch the defensive line. So that's pretty simple. But the one that's kind of confusing is the option defense pitch key. If you read it, it says that putting it on aggressive will focus on the pitch on the option, meaning that you're going to go uh, more towards the, the running back. But it doesn't work that way in theory. So we're going to go. We're going to pick that. We'll go ahead and we'll go to uh, speed option as they have a speed option here. And you're going to see that the left defensive end this time is going to go right after the quarterback pretty much every single time, which is not the way that it's worded. So I don't know what's going on there, but let's see what happens if we go to the other one. Let's go back to aggressive and let's see if it goes after the running back. I'm saying that, but I know that it will go after the running back. So even though it's worded backwards, it's actually the right option to go conservative. It says it's going to focus on the quarterback, but watch what happens when we actually pick a defense and pick the exact same play. For whatever reason, he's going to play this properly now where he starts at the quarterback and then he goes to the running back. You see the quarterback has to do a little fake pitch. As you can see, he basically shuts that down. So I don't know if this is a programming bug or if it's programmed backwards, but for right now, if you want to take away the widest, point of the play is I'm not actually doing anything by the way I'm just talking but if you want to take away the widest edge which is typically what you want to do because like I said you want to force that ball back inside you have to uh, play it this way you have to play conservative on both even though I missed the tackle there and this is going to be the best way to basically corral these outside pitches and try to turn the ball back inside because even though he's not making the tackle every single time you can see he actually starts by addressing the quarterback before he, he basically goes down and plays the pitch, which is what you want him to do because that's going to be the best way to stop from getting really big explosive outside runs on pitch plays. Now, when it comes to strip ball and tackling, uh, they're both kind of the same idea. The strip ball is going to, end, is going to result in more penalties, though. 
Um, if you look at it, they're saying that you're going to get more face mask penalties. And if it's similar to Madden, that was like every couple of plays, you get a face mask penalty. So I'm sure it's programmed similarly since it's the same adjustment. I would say this one's going to be best to put on conservative because it'll make sure that you get more. Uh, it'll lower your chances of broken tackles. And I feel like the better of the two is tackling. If you put this on aggressive, this will higher the chance of broken tackles and fake outs, uh, which kind of balances out between this because this will lower it. So it's kind of going kind of you're kind of playing in the middle anyway. You got one positive, one negative. But this here will also uh, make your AI defenders attempt more hit sticks for higher chances of fumbles. And like I said, in this game, fumbles feel like they happen way more often. So I want something in that regard to try to get more fumbles. So like I said, to me, the positive of this balances out the negative of this and that's the best way that i like to run that uh giving you basically the best of both worlds now last but not least we have flats this is something that i probably get the most questions about which is one of the reasons i'm making this video uh when it comes to flats uh, i personally think that the uh the matching principles in the game are pretty solid and i find that if you set your flats to default or zero or five i feel like that you're kind of um, limiting what the what the flats do. I've, I've noticed playing this game that a lot of times I'll put uh, defense on hard flats and they'll still drop back and cover pretty deep where if I were to put them on five, uh, which is typically my favorite if I'm running flats, uh, that's something where I feel like it limits that and they won't they will no longer drop back. And what I'm saying is uh, if you look, I'll go ahead and I'll pick a default play here. So I'm going to pick uh, Tampa 2 and then I'm going to try to find a play that doesn't have anything in the actual uh, hard flat area. So I picked the uh, the shark halfback wheel because there really isn't anything in the flat on the left side. And that's the side I'm gonna watch. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hard flat here just to see how this hard flat reacts because there's nothing really pulling him back there. As you can see, he goes to the opposite side. You can see the hard flat area is pretty much, uh, you know, in the five yard box, but he drops all the way back to 10 yards in the flat. So if I were to have this guy in a hard flat set to five, He's not going to drop back on this receiver at all. Now I'm running a five-yard flat. He just stands out there and does nothing. I'd rather him have the freedom to, to try to match a little bit. Even if he's only in like a 10-yard box, if he were to drop back to the 40 like he did on the last play, when this route continues and comes back, he's still in a position to potentially make a play, and then his play rec will kick in, and he has an opportunity, or his zone coverage will kick in, and he has an opportunity to make a play on the ball. So to me, this is another thing that's really situational. If I'm playing against somebody that's constantly beating me in the flats, I'll set my flats to five. If they're constantly beating me with... Uh, slants, I might set my curl flats to 15. To constantly beat me with crosses or something, I might set them to 25. Those would be the ones that I recommend if you're actually, um, you know, having issues with particular routes. But other than that, I want to give them that five yards uh, of play. I want to give them that, um, you know, it's really more like five to 10 yards of play because those typical cloud flats might play the full 10 yards between the zero and the 10 or you know the 10 to the 15 they might drop back within a certain uh radius that i can't get if i set it to a preset um to a preset flat so i'll typically leave it at default but like i said there are certain flats that do better jobs at covering certain routes that you just have to be aware of and when it comes to hooks i really don't mess with hooks at all i find that hooks don't really cover very well uh, I'd much rather just use my hook defenders as extra man defenders, and I'll typically uh, use with the middle myself. So that's pretty much it. Gave you guys an update on all the coaching adjustments. Also went over coverage shells as a little bit of a bonus. If you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, once again, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit like button, let me know in the comment section. If you want to see more videos like this that I made about similar topics, I'll have them popping up on screen. So just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. We should out.